ILO Declaration on Fundamental Principles and Rights at Work, adopted at Geneva on 18 June 1998. Whereas the ILO was founded in the conviction that social justice is essential to universal and lasting peace, whereas economic growth is essential but not sufficient to ensure equity, social progress and the eradication of poverty, confirming the need for the ILO to promote strong social policies, justice and democratic institutions, whereas the ILO should, now more than ever, draw upon all its standard-setting, technical cooperation and research resources in all its areas of competence, in particular employment, vocational training and working conditions, to ensure that, in the context of a global strategy for economic and social development, economic and social policies, are mutually reinforcing components in order to create broad-based sustainable development, whereas the ILO should give special attention to the problems of persons with special social needs, particularly the unemployed and migrant workers, and mobilize and encourage international, regional and national efforts aimed at resolving their problems, and promote effective policies aimed at job creation. Whereas, in seeking to maintain the link between social progress and economic growth, the guarantee of fundamental principles and rights at work is of particular significance in that it enables the persons concerned to claim freely and on the basis of equality of opportunity their fair share of the wealth which they have helped to generate, and to achieve fully their human potential. Whereas the ILO is the constitutionally mandated international organization and the competent body to set and deal with international labor standards, and enjoys universal support and acknowledgement in promoting fundamental rights at work as the expression of its constitutional principles, whereas it is urgent, in a situation of growing economic interdependence, to reaffirm the immutable nature of the fundamental principles and rights embodied in the constitution of the organization and to promote their universal application, the International Labour Conference, 1, recalls, a, that in freely joining the ILO, all members have endorsed the principles and rights set out in its constitution and in the Declaration of Philadelphia, and have undertaken to work towards attaining the overall objectives of the organization to the best of their resources and fully in line with their specific circumstances. b. That these principles and rights have been expressed and developed in the form of specific rights and obligations in conventions recognized as fundamental both inside and outside the organization. Two declares that all members, even if they have not ratified the conventions in question, have an obligation, arising from the very fact of membership in the organization, to respect, to promote and to realize, in good faith and in accordance with the Constitution, the principles concerning the fundamental rights which are the subject of those conventions, namely, a, freedom of association and the effective recognition of the right to collective bargaining, b, the elimination of all forms of forced or compulsory labor, c, the effective abolition of child labor, and d, the elimination of discrimination in respect of employment and occupation. 3. Recognizes the obligation on the organization to assist its members, in response to their established and expressed needs, in order to attain these objectives by making full use of its constitutional operational and budgetary resources, including by the mobilization of external resources and support, as well as by encouraging other international organizations with which the ILO has established relations, pursuant to Article 12 of its Constitution, to support these efforts, a. by offering technical cooperation and advisory services to promote the ratification and implementation of the fundamental conventions, b by assisting those members not yet in a position to ratify some or all of these conventions in their efforts to respect, to promote and to realize the principles concerning fundamental rights which are the subject of those conventions, and, c, by helping the members in their efforts to create a climate for economic and social development. 4. Decides that, to give full effect to this declaration, a promotional follow-up, which is meaningful and effective, shall be implemented in accordance with the measures specified in the Annex hereto, which shall be considered as an integral part of this declaration. 5. Stresses that labor standards should not be used for protectionist trade purposes, 
and that nothing in this declaration and its follow-up shall be invoked or otherwise used for such purposes. In addition, the comparative advantage of any country should in no way be called into question by this declaration and its follow-up. Annex, revised, follow-up to the declaration I. Overall Purpose 1. The aim of the follow-up described below is to encourage the efforts made by the members of the organization to promote the fundamental principles and rights enshrined in the Constitution of the ILO and the Declaration of Philadelphia and reaffirmed in this declaration. 2. In line with this objective, which is of a strictly promotional nature, this follow-up will allow the identification of areas in which the assistance of the organization through its technical cooperation activities may prove useful to its members to help them implement these fundamental principles and rights. It is not a substitute for the established supervisory mechanisms, nor shall it impede their functioning. Consequently, specific situations within the purview of those mechanisms shall not be examined or re-examined within the framework of this follow-up. 3. The two aspects of this follow-up, described below, are based on existing procedures. The annual follow-up concerning non-ratified fundamental conventions will entail merely some adaptation of the present modalities of application of Article 19, Paragraph 5e, of the Constitution, and the Global Report on the effect given to the promotion of the fundamental principles and rights at work that will serve to inform the recurrent discussion at the Conference on the needs of the members, the ILO action undertaken, and the results achieved in the promotion of the fundamental principles and rights at work. 2. Annual Follow-up Concerning Non-Ratified Fundamental Conventions A. Purpose and Scope 1. The purpose is to provide an opportunity to review each year, by means of simplified procedures, the efforts made in accordance with the declaration by members which have not yet ratified all the fundamental conventions. 2. The follow-up will cover the four categories of fundamental principles and rights specified in the declaration. b. Modalities 1. The follow-up will be based on reports requested from members under Article 19, Paragraph 5e of the Constitution. The report forms will be drawn up so as to obtain information from governments which have not ratified one or more of the fundamental conventions, on any changes which may have taken place in their law and practice, taking due account of Article 23 of the Constitution and established practice. 2. These reports, as compiled by the Office, will be reviewed by the governing body. 3. Adjustments to the governing body's existing procedures should be examined to allow members which are not represented on the governing body to provide, in the most appropriate way, clarifications which might prove necessary or useful during governing body discussions to supplement the information contained in their reports. 3. Global Report on Fundamental Principles and Rights at Work A. Purpose and Scope 1. The purpose of the global report is to provide a dynamic global picture relating to the four categories of fundamental principles and rights at work noted during the preceding period, and to serve as a basis for assessing the effectiveness of the assistance provided by the organization, and for determining priorities for the following period, including in the form of action plans for technical cooperation designed in particular to mobilize the internal and external resources necessary to carry them out. B. Modalities 1. The report will be drawn up under the responsibility of the Director General on the basis of official information, or information gathered and assessed in accordance with established procedures. In the case of states which have not ratified the fundamental conventions, it will be based in particular on the findings of the aforementioned annual follow-up. In the case of members which have ratified the conventions concerned, the report will be based in particular on reports as dealt with pursuant to Article 22 of the Constitution. It will also refer to the experience gained from technical cooperation and other relevant activities of the ILO. 2. This report will be submitted to the Conference for a recurrent discussion on the strategic objective of fundamental principles and rights at works based on the modalities agreed by the governing body. It will then be for the Conference to draw conclusions from this discussion on all available ILO means of action, including the priorities and plans of action for technical cooperation to be implemented for the following period 
and to guide the governing body and the office in their responsibilities. 4. It is understood that, 1. The conference shall, in due course, review the operation of this follow-up in the light of the experience acquired to assess whether it has adequately fulfilled the overall purpose articulated in Part 1. The foregoing is the ILO Declaration on Fundamental Principles and Rights at Work and its follow-up one duly adopted by the General Conference of the International Labour Organization during its 86th session which was held at Geneva and declared closed on 18 June 1998.